Hey everyone, welcome back to Consent with Creation. It's Jose Gonzalez here bringing you yet another episode for 2023. Thank you all for being here and I am so excited for today's guest. She is a book blogger by uh, evening and by late night she's also in the realm of professional wrestling as a broadcaster, as a writer, as a fan. The lovely Astrid Pizarro. Astrid, how are yeah, you? Yeah, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for being here. I'm looking forward to actually getting to know a little bit more about you. I know like we've always like come in passing in regards to like certain things going on. So it's really going to be nice to get to know everything they've gotten to do so far, which but from the looks of it is quite a lot, too. So. <laughs> I didn't notice until the people tell me what it happens. <laughs> Hey, that's a good problem to have. I mean, I'd rather be busy than not have much going on. But yeah, you have such a wealth of things I want to hear about. So I'm looking forward to this. So I know something I always kind of lead a conversation with with anyone that I have on is just kind of getting your early memories of digital content. So I think like our generation, we kind of got to see like the world of digital media really transform before our eyes. So do you have any like early memories of when you started to see some of that? Oof. For me, it was definitely books at first more than wrestling because I, I was trying to find, like, my community online, and I didn't know what it was. I know, at least for me in real life, it was always mm -hmm. alternative music, so I always well, was kind of the warp Tour kind of person and things like that. But nice. online, it was always, like, my book stuff. And I used to post the stuff on my Instagram, and I noticed it wasn't getting a lot of traction. Like, I wasn't finding, like, my audience for it. And for a while, I just kept thinking, mm -hmm. how do I divide this? And then I started to see a lot of people going, it's like, no, I have, like, a separate account. For my book stuff which is a good way to promote it separately rather than using my personal one so i created my books one mm -hmm. from there and it just i started going just taking pictures of books and little by little i started working with like indie authors and then i jumped to working with publishers too so i've been working with others and publishers promoting their work as well so it's just little things here and there that i've been able to do that i'm really grateful for Nice. Did you always grow up interested in a lot of literature? Yeah, my mom is always one of those people that she always encouraged me to read. Uh, I know I stopped reading when I was in college because it was a lot of work within my full-time job and full-time school. So I definitely didn't read much. But uh, once I did, I definitely yeah. found that balance and I was able to find what I liked and I just kept sticking to that. Nice, because I know, like, especially for me growing up, like, my family has always been big on, like, really trying to, like, promote reading, promoting, like, speaking well, like, a lot of educational stuff. I don't know, maybe it's a Puerto Rican thing, or if it's just, like, I've gotten very lucky with uh, my upbringing. So, were you actually born on the island as well? Yeah, I was born in Puerto Rico in Bayamón specifically, so very close to San Juan for those that haven't mm. visited the island. Uh, but, yeah, I was there yes. up until uh, 2004 that I moved here in December. So definitely this year will be my 20 year anniversary of being here in the U.S. now. Uh, I, I feel like it's oh. it feels like a mix because sometimes when I think about it now, it feels like I'm being here that I've been here longer than I've been in Puerto Rico. It feels weird to think about it at this point in my life. But uh, it's something that yeah. once you're up in, in that background, like my family won't have like won't have me forgive about our traditions and what we grew up with. And that's something that I really love about my family is that even moving here, we don't forget where we came from. Like we still have like three kings day and things like that. The Christmas is the same way we do Christmas yeah. with like the dinner first. And we have to have that arroz con gandules if we can. Anything, little things like that, like yes. as anything like that. We won't oh, forget it's... about it. And even like birthday celebrations and things like that, we always celebrate each other as much as we can. So that sense of community, I feel like it's more, it was more from Puerto Rican than it is from me. That's what I, I experienced at least. Yeah, I know for me, because my dad was a migrant, uh, my grandparents all were from different parts of Ponce, Hajuja, Aguaria, so all these different areas of the island coming all the way up here to nice and cold Buffalo, but like definitely having that sense of uh, tradition, really family oriented, faith oriented, really just promoting that everything we do has a reason for it and you should be proud of it. And I can definitely say I'm very proud to be 100% Boricua. Even if I wasn't born on the island, I still feel like I have that within me, which is wonderful. Yeah, I love it. Exactly. Like, once you're Boricua, you're Boricua. Forget about it. Yeah, it doesn't matter <laughs> if you're New Year freaking or uh, right from the island itself. But yeah, so I mean, you did mention alternative music, which I didn't know. Were there mm. like any favorite bands of yours that you were always listening to? I know I started with people like Paramore, for example, and like my old time lows and in like the main. But I know like for a lot of those bands, like some of them are inactive at this point. But uh, now more like in recent times, uh, definitely started off as one of my big ones. I, I feel like I was there from like a little bit of how they started. 
uh, one of that is very dear to my heart was their photo model because I started listening to them in high school as they were in high school. And I was able to see that transformation. Mm -hmm. And even one of them, not too long ago, I saw him and I, like, I was able to show him pictures when we met it, like when I was in high school, it was just like to see it, like from my high school times up until now, I'm still listening to your music. It just shows how your music has no time. And I get to listen to it nowadays. And it still applies to a lot of my life. Uh, but I feel like another one was definitely like, Hey Monday. Another one that I really enjoyed listening to. So I, I had a little bit of ranges, but uh, once I had one of my friends introduce me, I feel like I started getting to know a lot of them. And I introduced my sister to a lot of them too. So I feel like that's what caused her to have her major in, in, um, in, like, in, in music management and music business because of things like this. Wow, that's great. I mean, especially when you can come of age with certain things too. Like I know music, especially like I always consider it to be timeless. Like I think this past year, my Spotify wrapped instead of it being like a lot of the current releases, I went all the way back to like 2000s, 90s. And that was mostly what I was listening to. So even if it might feel like it's uh, old again, it's definitely still very much worth listening to nowadays too. So definitely rock whatever it is that you enjoy listening to. And then uh, kind of going back into uh, the Book Lovers book reviews, I know we did briefly touch on this. So were there favorite, uh, did you have any certain genres that you always gravitated towards, certain authors, different works that you might have been like just reading on repeat just because you couldn't get enough of that book? I definitely, when I first joined the community, I started doing more fantasy, romance, contemporary, and then little by little, I kept thinking to myself, like, I want to find myself in these books. And I started doing more research into minorities and having authors where like Hispanic, Latinx, or anybody that was, you know, BIPOC that I could follow and I could support because I kept thinking if I could support the other authors, I can support the authors that are minorities like myself. Uh, so I started going from there and I did a little challenge with a couple of friends of mine a few years ago. We called it the Consawa Reading Challenge. So we try to uh, like incorporate any like Latinx authors to it. So little things like that that I could just to be able to help promote these authors in ways that a lot of the publishers don't get to do and like having to show them my love as a reader too. So I feel like I started with that, but I gravitated now to like stories from minorities and BIPOC authors to the point that that's pretty much almost everything I read. And I try to follow them. It's like once I like their writing, I just keep following them from there on and I support them in any way that I can. No, I love that, too. And it feels like a lot of times people don't always give certain mediums a chance because maybe they're conditioned to associating it with, uh, especially with reading, a lot of people might associate it with really just a lot more study stuff and even just leisure. So it shows that even like outside of the confines of an institution, there's so much that you can find within the pages of a book, too. And it doesn't have to be anything where you're pigeonholing yourself either. It's being able to like really immerse yourself the same way people can do with a TV show, with a film. So... That's awesome that you've also been able to really try to emphasize a lot of the BIPOC, minority, Latinx, a lot of those uh, authors, too, that might not always get the same opportunities that other authors might get just based on a sheer circumstance. And just there's obviously not as many of those authors, unfortunately, but definitely being able to showcase them is something that will always be phenomenal. And kind of speaking of that, I know something that you did get to do most recently was, uh, I think it was back for uh, 2020, the Social Distance Book Fest. So it was an online uh, festival dedicated to all things literature, where you even got to interview uh, Jenny Torres Sanchez about one of her uh, most recent works at that time, We Are Not From Here. So how was that experience getting to work with an author like that in that capacity? Yeah, it was definitely dis different in that aspect because we were just creating the book festival thinking this is the first year that we didn't get to do anything because of COVID so we wanted to do something different and having people like a lot of people get this book festivals like in New York and then in California so anybody that doesn't live around those states don't get the opportunity to go like I have only been to a book convention in Orlando at least I haven't been able to travel outside and I, that's on my list but I haven't been able to do it yet so we thought about doing this uh, book festival just to cover a, a little bit of everything when it came to books and just supporting all the authors that we could. And I, I like that one of the things that we did also to minorities too, we had like different sections of what we wanted to cover. And what it was with Jenny and I love Jenny and her work. So when I, I saw that we had, I could have that opportunity to work with her and promote her book, especially with the topics that it covers and work with Penguin scene in that aspect, I, I had to jump by the opportunity that to do it. And I'm glad I did it too. And if you hear about her work and what she's been doing, I like how she brings her stories, like even her life into these stories. 
Yeah, I feel like especially like having that background too. Like I know like people like a Gabriel Garcia Marquez would incorporate a lot of that into a lot of the stuff that he was doing back in the day. So it still shows that a lot of that anecdotal, uh, those lifestyle moments can really still translate even in a work of fiction and really paint such a vivid picture, especially when it comes to something as important as immigration in the United States, especially from uh, the sense of Mexican heritage as well to really showing like how there's so much more representation that we need to do and a lot more tolerance as well in the States. So definitely a poignant work. Uh, how was that experience with the whole festival? Did it kind of feel like, even though we were stuck in quarantine, did it still have a sense of a convention with all the different panels and the interaction with everyone? Yeah, I love it because we, got, we were so organized to the point of like, you cover this and you cover that and we try to make sure everybody like, make sure there's moderators for the YouTube stuff, anything that, that was live, make sure there's, make sure that the writing stuff is going up and things like that. So it was definitely a, a different experience working behind the scenes in that aspect. I hope I can get to do it again, but in a person for book conventions, I, I haven't been able to do that. But uh, being able to do that and just online, work with other people in the community, other creators, just to get this going and get this uh, going and building it up from scratch because the first time they, they did it and they, I think the only time so far they've been able to do it. But you know, to be able to make sure you cover all your bases and when it comes to everything, like having ideas from everybody, like, oh, let's not forget, like, we need a moderator for the YouTube channel. We need to make sure that this goes up at this time. And, you know, little details that may sound silly at first, but, you know, I'm glad that everybody was able to bring up ideas and we were able to co incorporate them into this whole convention. Yeah, and I love the fact that there is such an attention to detail, even though it was all a digital presence, they still treated it just as significant as if there was going to be in a big venue for like however many days it was, all the different uh, panels that you did end up having, making sure that the interactions were being kept up with everything, definitely made sure like there was a big sense of structure, which can definitely be lost with stuff like that. And then also, I know you briefly touched on this, but getting to work with publishers like Penguin Teen and uh, Wattpad. So how did those opportunities come about? I remember at least the Penguin Teen, I got an email from James, who I love. Shout out to James. Uh, James had emailed me and I thought it was a spam email. I really did. I didn't think I was getting something like this out of nowhere because it's something that I didn't apply for. He just sent an email to a lot of creators and I remember at that moment on Twitter, everybody was like, did everybody get the email from this person? Is email real? And I see so many people tweeting about it. So that's what made me think, wait, it is real then. And I remember, I forgot who I messaged at the time asking, like, oh, you got it too? Yeah, I did. And then we showed each other the emails, like, okay, so it's real because we're all getting the same thing. And it's like, yeah, like I've seen your work and I see what you do. So we just want you to include it, uh, include you as one of the people to promote a Penguin Teen in the books. And it's like, that's amazing. Like, I never thought something like that would happen. Uh, for Wattpad, I believe they were sending out like applications, so I filled it out. I didn't think I was going to get anything out of it, and then all of a sudden it came about. Um, but I'm definitely love uh, working with both of them. They work differently, which I like, but it's also an opportunity to show off and help you, the, you know, support these authors in any way that I can online, promoting their work. And I love that, especially for Penguin Team they do different events so all of a sudden they will send me an email hey we're doing an event with this author for this book if you love the author or the book and you're excited for it, you can just join us they will send us an invite and we had like ice cream eating ice cream online at the same time with the author doing a q a so little things like that that you don't get to do often so that's oh, really cool how they would be selling behind it and with wapad i love that they will send the boxes with the books and it's like the book but it will come with a bookmark and with a candle and like little things like that kind of like a sort of a pr box mm -hmm. so it always had the little details to it which i really loved so that's why they have been like my two favorite uh, publishers to work with the next one has been avon books too uh for avon i also applied for and i didn't think i was gonna get it and i was so surprised when i did but they always really great when they you know, show the books, they have a little bookmark or something to it to come with it. I think it's really cute when it comes matching with the book too. I love little things like that, but it isn't just mm -hmm. the book when you come to promote it later on, which I like. And it just boxes with details. And I love when they do that because it just, you can do the unbox, you know, online and, and you know, in your platforms and it just looks so well done. But uh, yeah, the overall experience have been pretty amazing. I like how it's been different for all the publishers, but they have been pretty great with me so far. No, that's phenomenal, too, especially because they really have really tried to put it into the creator's hands of, no, this is a big deal. What you're doing is important. We appreciate it. And they're really trying to highlight everything the same way they would for their authors that they do for their creators, which is phenomenal. 
So when it came to doing a lot of the book reviews, I know as far as I could see, I think back down to 2016, you've been blogging about everything too. So were there like any certain blogs that you were reading at the time that kind of got you inspired to start doing your own? Because I mean, you've done Blogspot, you've done WordPress, you've done Tumblr. So definitely have seen all sorts of the different micro blogging uh, spheres, just kind of getting your uh, eyes open into uh, the possibility of writing yourself. It just, I was trying to find my way around it and I kept thinking like, this is something that I would like to do in my future. If I could find a job out of it, I would love to. And at the time that was my mindset. So I don't remember who it was exactly, but I know like being from the beginning, I just wanted to write about books. And I was like, how can I write about books if, you know, I can just, and I noticed I, I can only review them after I read them. I said, why not? And it started from reviewing to doing blog tours, which I love to do into and I've been doing a lot of recently and just signing up with these tour companies and then highlighting the book. And then they, did, they do a whole tour of it during that time that the book comes out to promote it because we have different mediums. They start using bloggers, they use YouTubers, they use TikTokers and, and bookstagrammers. So I like the mix of medium they use for that too. And I just kept going from there. And I, I've had a little time, like, especially lately because of wrestling. I feel like wrestling has taken that priority over it. So I haven't been writing as many book reviews as I want. But mm -hmm. I decided this year of, like, stepping back a little bit when it came to book tours compared to what I did last year and the year before that. And focusing more on trying to review the books that I, after I read them. I'm not going to say every one of them because it'll be super mm -hmm. challenging. But at least the ones that I really enjoy oh, the right. most are the ones that I really want to shout out then post about those because I, I figured it would be a great way to promote them and the author. Yeah, no, that's phenomenal too. And especially getting to see a lot of uh, that almost instant response too, because you'll see people that have similar mindsets or like, actually, I didn't interpret this this way. This is what I got out of it and really opens a nice discussion about the works too, which I think only shows to prove that what you guys are doing is really vital for these authors, really having so many different perspectives on even just what you've read, because not everyone's going to interpret everything the same way. So really getting to see what stuff translates across for everybody, different ideas that you might not have noticed before. So that is phenomenal that you were able to do so much, even just over the last few years. And then kind of pivoting into the wrestling stuff, I would love to know where your love of pro wrestling first started as well. I had somebody ask me that a few days ago. I don't remember exactly when. Because <laughs> I remember I moved here in 2004, uh, December specifically. But I remember sometime after that, I think it could have mm -hmm. been 2005, 2006. I just remember like watching it with my dad. I remember years before, I had seen a glimpse of it, reading the uh, K and Lita storyline happened and she was pregnant. And I remember watching that little bit oh, of man. like when the ladder thing happened and Sitsuki happened and the baby and kicking the baby like a football in the arena. I remember that part. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked my dad. Yeah, that's an introduction all right. And I remember like kind of being sad about her losing the baby because I kept asking my dad, why is she clutching her midsection like the way she is? And he's like, well, she, like in the story, like she was pregnant and she lost the baby, but that's not real. But I'm like, the, that's the introduction to it. But he also explained that aspect of it. He's like, it's not real, so don't worry about it. She's fine. This is just for television. And that's all I remember watching. And then years later, I don't remember when it happened. I just remember watching people like Eddie and Rey Mysterio mm -hmm. and like falling in love with that style of wrestling that they had. And so I just started, I kept watching it from there. And I remember like, I liked women's wrestling at the time, but it wasn't being highlighted the way I wanted it to. So it took a step back for mm -hmm. me at that time. And then I had times when they did NXT, for example, when NXT first started, being that it was in Orlando, I had such an opportunity to be there a few times that I was able to watch it live and it made me like fall back in love with women's wrestling the way I wanted it to be portrayed. So it definitely sparked my interest in women's wrestling as a whole. Watching people like Paige and Emma at the time and even like the four horsewomen coming up in the main roster, like I, things like that, it, it helped me get connected to it. And I had moments like when I went to the Mayo Classic tapings that they had, I think it was the second year, if I'm not mistaken, little things like that that I was able to go to because mm -hmm. it was so close to me that it helped me like invite that love for women's wrestling. And it just kept me going on from there. But that was like the main thing was women's wrestling for me. And it's like, as much as I like everything at the whole show, every time I saw a woman, I was like, yes, I love what they're on screen. And it's just like, I hated that they were brown panties and things like that. I was like, dang it, I go want yeah. something else for them. And then see like the ladies from NXT kind of have that change in there. And even on the other aspect, I remember watching like Impact at the time when they were having those Gil K Moss and Calm matches that were so amazing to watch and Taylor and Taylor, mm -hmm. things like that. They were so different. So that's what I ended up liking about wrestling as well. That aspect of like the women were getting opportunities from there too, that I didn't get to see that in WWE when I was watching. 
Yeah, no, it's funny that you mentioned it because I know I kind of started with WWE around the same time you did. I think the first thing that I always remembered was uh, Victoria during Ashley's initiation from the Diva Search and the Widow's Peak kind of being the first move that like <laughs> got me into like watching it hardcore. So I could definitely vouch for women's wrestling kind of being my gateway into everything and then just seeing so many things happen over the years. Like WWE kind of taking a step back, but then Impact starting the knockouts division, really seeing like the focus on the wrestling more than just the beauty, but like still still being able to play into that obviously so you came in at a really good time when it came to like seeing all the different stuff with women's wrestling too so when did you kind of know uh you wanted to take just being a fan into something a little bit more and starting to talk more about wrestling Venice, i wanted to do something like that for a while now but i had two things i kept thinking i'm a female in the male dominated community and being that i'm hispanic i do have my accent i hated my voice at the same time so it took me a while to get used to things like that. And I wanted to jump into that, but I was always afraid. And I didn't have like a, the right spacing at home to do it. And then when I was able to move and have like my own spacing to do podcasts and things like that, I was thinking like, how do I jump in? Like, how do, who do I join? Like, how can I get started on this? Because I want to do it. And I remember like my dad telling me, he's like, you know, if you find something, like go for it. And my, I remember my dad being one of the people that encouraged me the most when, <laughs> to do that uh, of all people. It's like, he's the one that really introduced me to wrestling. And I like how him and my brother stepped back from it. And I ended up a bigger fan than both of them together. But it's just that right. point of my life that I wanted to do something with wrestling. But obviously I was not going to wrestle. I, I knew I didn't have the body to wrestle, but I wanted to be mm-hmm. involved in it somehow. And that's when I found the the tweet from Love Wrestling at the time. And just like, oh, we're looking for contributors. And I was like, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? They can say no, and I can just move on and do something else. <laughs> so I remember uh, just yeah. sending an email uh, to Spencer, who's the owner and, like, the main person behind Love Wrestling. And then, like, yeah, let's interview you on this thing. And I was like, sure. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about because I don't have experience in this whatsoever. Um, and it was just a cool chat. As like I told him, I was like, I thought I was going to start with writing because I was like, like my main thing, I have a degree in writing and journalism. So I kept thinking mm-hmm. I can write and I can watch wrestling. So why not combine both like I did with, with the book stuff. So that was my, my thing. And then little by little, they kept sending invitations like, yeah, we're going to do a show tonight or we're going to do this. And they just asked me, it's like, what show- shows do you watch like regularly? So I said, well, I watch Raw, SmackDown, NXT. I watch Impact every now and then, and it just depends on what you want. That I don't know what do you like. What are you guys thinking? And at the moment, they said, "Well, we're trying to buy the show, try to put one for NXT." And I said, "Well, I love watching NXT. I watch it every single week. I don't mind it." So that's how I started. I remember uh, working with my friend Ed, who's my one of my dear friends now, and I was still kind of shy, reserved the way I started. But little mm-hmm. by little, the group made me feel more confident. They helped me realize that I could speak my mind and nothing bad was going to happen to me, which is my like one of my biggest fears yeah. being a female in the community. I expected those kind of comments mm-hmm. to be like, you know, there's a girl like, what does she know about this? And just kind of comments that I in my mind, I was already nervous thinking those were the comments I was going to get. So I was really surprised what I did. And I just kept going from there. And that's how I met like my friend uh, Cody and my friend Mel and my friend Parrish, too. And then little by little, I feel they all helped me grow that person out of me. And they helped me grow that, you know, like you can talk about whatever you want. Nobody's going to do anything to you. You're going to be fine. And bringing out like that shyness out of me because I'm really, really shy in person when I first start. And I kind of get used to people and I talk a little bit more. So they're the ones that made me really feel comfortable in front of the camera. They really are in no, I love yeah, that. Yeah, and too. it's just those conversations that they encourage you without even knowing, and they just, it happened like that. And it's one of those, like, what do you love to do? Or, you know, let's talk about this. And I just kept thinking in my mindset, I'm not going to think that there's a couple of people watching. I'm just going to think it like you and I, other friends, are just talking about what we liked about the show. And just kind of exactly. think about it that way. Mm-hmm. So that's that was my mindset going into it, so I wouldn't get nervous. <laughs> and then it kept changing. <laughs> No, I mean, you've done so well, too. I mean, you've done so many different broadcasts over the last couple of years, too, seeing you move up from different places as well. So I am very curious to know how you got the nickname The Natural throughout all of this, too. So is that something from when you were doing NXT over at Love Wrestling that just kind of it came up? And yeah, stopped? I did one show, and one of the contributors at the time, he wasn't on screen, but I remember in our little chat that we had, he sent a message, I guess the next day we was watching it, and he said, 
Ashley, that was amazing. You did incredible. You're such a natural. Like, that's your name, the natural. Like, that's it. And I just, I didn't pick it up at first. I just kept going with it. And then as a joke to him, I kept putting it on screen. I said, look, I'm honoring you. You copy that. So I'm just going to put it on screen all the time. And it just kept going from there to the point that like, all my friends just call me that now. They're just like, the natural. It's like, oh, I'm like, if I say anything about mom, natural mom, like this is the natural's mom. Uh, so things like that, just like it kept going from there. So after that, I started putting it on every single one of the streams that I do as like my nickname kind of thing, because that's what people started calling me. So I just, it stuck for some reason. Uh, like I told my friends, like, I don't think there's anything natural about me doing this whatsoever. I know I'm, I think about it like I'm terrible at it. <laughs> so I feel like it never fits, but it started that way. And then one of my friends started making like a little font, like a love wrestling kind of font for me. And that's what I was using at the time being in love wrestling to promote my stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's how we kept going from there. Just like one random person started saying it and just like everybody started picking it up. So we went from that to the pose and it just started one time and then everything kept going to from there. I don't know how it goes, but it just stuck too. Yeah, I will say it always is interesting what people kind of associate you with and then how it just kind of snowballs into something. So definitely a great way to make you know, like, hey, people think I'm a natural, might as well own it. I'm going to show that I am the natural, which like that's phenomenal. And I know you mentioned like kind of struggling at first just because you were so concerned, like being a woman in the space of pro wrestling. And not only that, like coming in as a Latinx creator yourself to like just not feeling the most confident. Did you have any inspirations in regards to like different wrestling personalities that kind of helped you like mold what it is that you would say is your style now? I wouldn't say like anybody in particular. It just, I felt like I, I just got encouragement from people here and there. I, I started with my people and then I, I met people like Ella along the way who I love. It's dear to my heart. And in her way, she has encouraged me. We love Ella. Jane oh yes. Right? We love Ella Jane in this household. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that even like, like I wouldn't say pun intended naturally, she has encouraged me to do things here and there. And that's how it started. Just like people telling me little pieces of advice and I just started following it from there. And that's how it started. Just to me, I kept thinking maybe somebody else will see them, themselves in me and they're going to encourage themselves to do the same. You never know, not only being a female, but being Puerto Rican in this space too. I don't feel like we don't get a lot of Puerto Ricans in this space in Hispanic. So it's nice to see somebody different. So I was like, I'm hoping like somebody gets inspired the way I was inspired by others. And that's how it happened to me with Ella. For example, she's one of the people that inspired me to like keep going with it. I kept seeing what she was doing. I was like, I want to do that too. And I seen like my friends like Ed and Parrish have been so people that were behind me as well. It's like, if you get this opportunity, go get it. Like go do it. Like we'll be right behind you to support you. And then along the way, I met people like Cody and Mel. Mel, who's also been another dear friend to me since I met her. I remember that I invited her and Ella when I didn't know Ella, really. So I was surprised that Ella responded to begin with mm -hmm. to do a reacts to Knockout Smackdown. I think it was two years ago at this point. Um, and, and they both yep. answered me. So it was really surprising. That's how our friend, my friendship started with both of them. That's the first time I met them like really face to face like this online. And even with Mel, she's always been encouraged. She's like, if I tell her, oh, I got this going on, she's like, you go kill it, girl. Let me know where I can share it, and I'll share it for you, too. It is like little things like that that it makes you think, like, I can do this because I got people behind me who really, like, support me in what I'm doing. And if they think I can do it, then I should be able to think that I can do it as well. No, that's wonderful. And I feel like as odd as it might sound, I feel like I don't know if I've gotten lucky over the years, but it seems like a lot of people like even like in like the very niche wrestling communities, they want everyone to win and not mm -hmm. just about themselves winning. I don't know if maybe it's because we grew up with like women's wrestling and like that sense of camaraderie because that was at the time of the revolution and like really taking ownership and like becoming more and more of what it is today. So definitely having that circle is proven like you've been doing so much it seems like you have a lot of things going on you have podcasts here a podcast there articles here articles there like you are very much a very busy personality when it comes to wrestling which is phenomenal to see i know uh you did also venture into your own show most recently uh the ladies wrestling showcase as someone who kind of did a weekly women's wrestling podcast back in the day, it's nice to see more and more of these start up and everything too. So what made you kind of want to start that uh, project on top of uh, even when you uh, contribute to something like a women's wrestling talk as a writer? I just kept thinking it's not often that you get women talking about women's wrestling. So I would like to see that more often. I know it's not going to be exactly the whole focus of it because I want some other guys like yourself to join us in an episode or two. 
But <laughs> like my main focus was like, I want women to talk about women and what women go through. Because I feel like most of the time, like for example, the thing with Sasha and Naomi is one big thing that happened. And you saw a lot of guys commenting about it and just saying, oh, they're ungrateful, they're this and that. It's like, yeah, but have you been in their in their shoes as women in this space? Not only that, but as black women. It's like, we don't get often to see women talking about the aspect of like, this is what they're going through. And it's just like, I think it's interesting from the woman's perspective to see it. It doesn't really happen often. So I would like to see it more often happening. And I feel like I've seen a lot of girls do a lot of reaction shows and things like that, like myself, like I already do that, mm-hmm. but I wanted to talk about those things. It's like, from your perspective as a woman, how do you see this? And we're going to have a different perspective from our guys. So I think that's something that I wanted to bring to the table. And not only that, but my friend being like, we have different backgrounds too. I feel like even then our point of views are going to be different, but we're going to bring that woman's perspective, which is the base of the show. So that's why I wanted my friend to join me and do it. I just... I thought we'll do a show here and there and along the way we'll bring people in based on the topic and then we get to talk about different things in women's wrestling. Like we had the, one of the first episodes we talked about the um, the four horsewomen and their influence and we had our friend uh, Kayla join us for that one because she loves the four horsewomen. So it's nice to see from their perspective. It's like, yeah, I like this, but I didn't like that. And this could have been differently. And I'm a fan of this one and I don't like this one for this reason. And I feel like, for some reason, it feels like sometimes the guys are harsher on the women in wrestling when it feels like as a wrestler. And I feel mm-hmm. like as women, we, we can have yeah. a different perspective on that. And I would like to see more people talk about that perspective. It doesn't get to, talked about often. So I, I feel like a lot of guys comment on women's wrestling, but we don't get women doing that. So that's why I wanted to bring that to the table. No, that's a great point, too, because I know even back in the day before I started getting into like talking about women's wrestling, I think back like when I first got into it really at that time, there wasn't that many women actually doing like the podcast side of things when it came to wrestling. I think at the time it was really just like diva dirt. So like people like Aaron, like Chrissy, I think uh, Sierra was doing ring bells at the time. So like you had some women's voices, but really still not to even to the point of today where we're starting to see a lot more women get involved with the creation aspect of it. So definitely showing that, Hey, like even before we had everything that we had today, like there's still a way to get the message across of things that are successful, things that aren't successful while still showing like, Hey, this is my perspective as a woman as to why this is working or as why this isn't working, how I could change this things you're looking forward to and just having that representation. Cause even today it still feels like, there's still a lot more that we could do for representation in the space of wrestling whether it's just as a woman whether it's as a minority whatever it is just definitely a lot more work for representation to still be done yeah and i know uh actually uh on top of just uh the ladies wrestling showcase and your stuff with women's wrestling talk you've still been doing making an impact you've been a part of uh the backbreaker media and our local established uh podcast right now so like how does it feel knowing that you have like your own little network of different uh, projects that you're working on all in the realm of wrestling? It just I, I kept thinking that I wanted opportunities to work with my friends to talk about wrestling and the shows that we both love. So that's how I started. I do uh, Tuesdays, I'll talk about NXT with my friend Ed. And then Thursdays, I do with my friend Cody, talk about Impact. And then obviously, like Ladies Wrestling Showcase every now and then, I decided to do it more bi-weekly just to give us some time to like think of topics. And then not only that, but having my series Astrid asked on top of it. So just like I wanted to work with my friends and I had people like Mike who wanted to provide his advice and his point on it. And I said, well, I want to work on my own. I wanted to take a chance on myself and grow my own network. It's like, well, if I can help you along the way, I will do that. And just like my friend Parrish did and everybody in the our local establishment. So it started from there to the point of like, you do your own thing and we'll, you know, share it and we'll support each other. But we also have our things together, which is what I love because it's a good balance for me. I want to grow my own stuff by myself yeah. and I want people to see what I'm about and not necessarily be connected to everything they do and vice versa. So I like it. Just, it just gives us an opportunity to do different things uh, and for local establishments as well is that we're not only focused on wrestling. Uh, they also have things about music and then Marvel. And then hopefully in sometime in March, uh, Bobby and I will get to do every video on screen. So it's like I get to talk about different things that I love. Like I, I can talk about horror movies now and talk about it in their stuff because I don't get to do that in my own thing. And it doesn't fit what I have in my YouTube channel. So it's nice to always have that variety on topics that I can always jump in and say, my friends are doing a show about Marvel and I just watched the movie. I can join them and talk about it. So that's why I like about uh, working with uh, OLE, as I would like to call it. 
Uh, and then with my breaker, I always have Mike mm-hmm. always gave me advice like, I think you can do this and do that. And then this will help you grow and this will have more people see your product and things like that, that I, I like just, I'm open to his advice. Yeah, and it's showing, too, because it feels like a lot more passion is behind the things that you're doing. You're getting more exposure. You're getting more reps in to perfect your craft. And it really does translate with everything that you're doing. So a lot to be proud of, for sure. Uh, As far as uh, what might be coming down the pipeline, do you have anything that you would want to check off your uh, to-do list for 2023 this year? Well, one of them, it's coming up uh, now uh, this weekend, the, the 20 and 21st uh, for Impact. I wanted to do media for uh, come as media to one of the events, and I get to do that with Impact. I don't know what it's going to be like, so we'll see. I'm um, open to the experience. Yes. I'm excited that it's Impact of all people, over like of all the companies. And by one thing I would like to do, I would like to join Fightful. That's one of my main goals, like so join Fightful and, and sometime in the future. That's the, the platform that I'm looking forward to. And when it comes to like events, I want to do like any kind of book convention, like, kind of like a WrestleCon kind of thing and do a lot of enemies and meet a lot of wrestlers because I haven't been able to do that for like two years with being at work now. But I would like to go to that convention and do kind of like that WrestleMania week because I've been able to go to WrestleMania a few times, but I want to do like the whole week mm-hmm. and just do go to this indie show and go to this and go to that and like have something to do every single day. Like I haven't been able to do that yet. So I want to do that part of it. So I'm hoping sometime next year because this year I'm going to London, sorry, WrestleMania. <laughs> but uh, I'm like, <laughs> London's my priority. I had to delay it. But I'm hoping like maybe next year or the year after that, I can just plan it out the whole week. And it's like, I'm going to meet up with this person for this show, meet up with this person for this show and just being able to finally meet like my online friends like yourself and Ella that I might be able to like chat with online. But I haven't met you guys in real life and it sucks because we're so far away, but I want to meet you guys too. Yeah, no, I feel that too. I think this last year is like kind of like my first round of doing that kind of stuff when it comes to like WrestleCon interviews, going to different indie shows, like my first WrestleMania in general, getting to meet like a lot of friends. So like I always kind of say it's not a matter of if you're going to do something, it's a matter of when. So definitely knowing what it is that you're looking forward to doing and like kind of formulating a plan on how you're going to get there. It might not be this year or if it is, it could be maybe something different than a WrestleMania. I'm sure there's going to be a star cast. I mean, Florida is turning into like a nice hotbed with wrestling too so chances are you might find something sooner rather than later aside from just impact i have no doubt of that but definitely i love the fact that you have so many things that you're looking forward to do and i can't wait to see you execute on them and then just kind of as a a nice wrap up to everything do you have any advice for anyone looking to begin uh, their own journey with creation I would definitely like find like what what's your like niche or your community because that's something that i struggle with at first but once you find that community go right for it and try to find any opportunity with it because I, that's how I felt. Like once I jumped in with the book community, I kept going from there. It was like, I started with my bookstagram and my blogging account and then I started working with publishers and with authors and even like doing little, like I helped a, a book tour company before and I did the social uh, distance festival. So it's like little things here and there that you can do. Just like I jumped into wrestling now and just like I jumped in and here I went from doing weekly shows to like podcasting to doing live reaction shows and writing. It was like when I jumped in, I try to find any opportunity to get involved. So I would say once you jump in and you find that place that you like community for you, jump in at any opportunity to do what you can and find your ways to grow and learn and gain that experience. That's something that I'm big on. If I can gain any experience from anybody or any way to learn from somebody, I will take the opportunity to do so. So it's like I always see it like I can learn anything I can I want as long as I open myself to it. So that's always something that I, I look forward to when I work with anybody. Anything I can learn from you, I'll take it. Uh, and anything I can grow from, I will do that as well. I'm open to advice. I'm open to insight. I'm open to support. It's like I'm the kind of person that if you share my stuff, I share my, your stuff and vice versa. So that's one of the things I'm big on. Like I, I want to support the people that support me as well. And not that I support people just to get it back. But I wouldn't want, if you do it, that's always nice to see as well. So I definitely love supporting the people. Like, so find your people as well. Once you do, support each other in any way that you can. That's something that's big and that's helped made a difference in my life, at least. I've been able to meet all those people that I mentioned before, and we've been able to support each other in our journeys. And we all have different journeys and different tra- trajectories, but we all still help each other in any way that we can. Uh, and, and I like how I've had that, like like you said, with Women's Wrestling Talk, I've been able to like write my reviews and I have people like just share them. And it's like, I went from writing my NXT reviews and I went to like for Hispanic Heritage Month I was writing about you know Hispanics or Puerto Rican female wrestlers and a lot of them shared it on their social media 
And then now I just, we had a top 25 for each, uh, 2022. I was writing about Mandy Rose and even she shared it on her Twitter. And so, and it's still getting traction. So it's amazing to see like little things like that. And it's like, you never know who's going to see it and then keep going from there. So I would say share everything that you can, not only from yourself, but from your people and the people that you know as well, because you never know who's going to reach out to them or to you after you share it. Absolutely. And I think that sense of kind of, it takes a village still translates even to like us as like in the world that we live in, everything is very community oriented. It's very collaborative. So being open to not only like being proud to share, like just because you enjoy their content, but like it also shows like, Hey, I recognize what you're doing. You're up to some great things. Let me go ahead and uh, share that with you. And then it kind of builds that network and that relationship with a bunch of other people that will easily do it yourself. I know I'm kind of mad. We didn't get a chance. Well, I didn't get a chance to do it uh, back in like September, October for Hispanic Heritage Month, getting to jump on that panel. I think it was right when I was at Bound for Glory, mm -hmm. but definitely glad we got to have yeah. our conversation mm -hmm. finally. This was a wonderful talk. Thank you so much, Astrid, for being on. Where can people find no, you? No, I want to thank you for doing this with me. It's not often that I'm on the other side and get an interview. I'm definitely not used to that part yeah. of it. Uh, but you can find me on my Twitter, which is the same as my name on here. I get used to that. Uh, Astrid Pizarro, um, which is mm -hmm. where I can share most of my stuff uh, with OLA with backbreaker and women's wrestling talk and even my book stuff i get to share on there more often that's and you know that's how it is for me so if we have a community that's similar you know i'm always open to helping other people as well if i can i'm not saying i'm an expert or the best at it but i can show you from what i've learned in little bits and pieces so and just i you can always find everything there or um my if you do the book stuff then book lovers book reviews will be uh, my my thing whether it's TikTok, uh, Instagram, or even Facebook as well. So little things like that that I get to share about the book community. I love that. And then, as always, you guys can find me everywhere on socials at Jose on the Air, twitch.tv slash Jose Can You See. Uh, YouTube, I think, is at the Jose Gonzalez. So making sure that you give this a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think. Any comments you have, put them down below. Five stars across your audio platforms. Definitely help us move up. It's going to be a great year here on the show. It's already been two phenomenal episodes so far. I can't wait to see what else is going to come this year. And I can't wait to have you all back again for the next episode so until then take care everybody